Welcome back to the channel everybody. So today is going to be a great video for any of you out there who are planning on going to special forces assessment and selection um, or really any special operations selection. This information is, is going to be good for that also. And even those of you in the civilian world who may be trying to get into distance running, marathon running, ultra marathons, uh, Ironman events, anything like that. Okay, uh, this information is going to kind of carry across the spectrum of all of those things, right? So what we're going to talk about is the most common injuries at things like SFAS and in the Q course that get people dropped from the course. Okay, so excuse me. Um, for those of you who don't know, yes, a ton of people wash out of these courses, but more than anything that drops people is medical injuries, okay? There's a ton of different ways you guys can get hurt. Um, preparing for and especially at things like special forces assessment and selection it's designed to physically break you okay especially the q course as well so um, before we jump into the injuries um, if you guys enjoy my content don't forget to like comment and subscribe uh, it really does help the channel okay and i always forget to do that so i need to start doing that more anyway let's jump right into it okay and quite a few of these injuries i suffered from myself um because i didn't um know how to prevent them at the time now i do so hopefully this information helps you guys as you're preparing to get ready okay number one the number one most common thing after sfas or during sfas that i saw dudes get medically dropped from um, is stress fractures okay particularly in feet um, ankles and in the shins tibial type uh, stress fractures okay um, the reason for that is they are a basically an impact style injury that is occurred over long durations of training, okay? Um, and the things you do in SFAS and the Q course, you are gonna put an obscene amount of mileage on your feet and not just that, with an extra 45 to 55 pounds on your back at all times, okay? It's extremely stressful on your bones, especially if you haven't trained up for something like this, okay? I myself ended up with a stress fracture in my left foot that turned into an actual hairline fracture and then a stress fracture in my tibia that again turned into a fr uh, real fracture because um, I thought I could train through them. Okay, that's the dangerous thing about these stress fractures. Once they start, there is no stopping them other than stopping your training and letting them heal, which if you're in SFAS or that uh, Special Force Qualification course, you're not going to be able to do, okay? So, um, yeah, so we know what causes them now. How do we prevent them, okay? The, the biggest thing that can prevent these guys is basically time under tension, time under the ruck, the mileage, okay? You have to put in the time um, on the pavement, but you need to do it at least, I suggest, a year out in advance, start slowly building up your tolerance, okay? Your bones are gonna become more dense and calcified as you do this for a long time, right? So it's interesting because, you know, it's very common for guys to get stress fractures in the course and whatnot, but after a couple years in the course, you'll never get another one um, in your entire career because your bones have calcified and, and gotten so dense because of, those, um, because of the time you've put on the pavement, okay? But initially, when your bones aren't ready for that, these can disqualify a ton of guys, okay? So, um, highly suggest you start training at least a year out and start putting those heavy amounts of mileage build up to it, okay? The very important thing is, if you notice that you're starting to have, you know, the buildup of pain in your feet, your shins, especially shin splints, okay? Shin splints are just a precursor to stress fractures. You have to dial it back, okay? You dial it back, you let them kind of heal and go away, then you ramp back up your training and you continue doing that in that first year. So that way when the point you get to SFAS, you've built the density in your bones and you're not gonna have to worry about it, okay? Recovery, if you do get a full on stress fracture, hairline fracture, you gotta wait. It's the only recovery to, to bone issues, okay? Um, and that is obviously a problem. So if you can stave off ever having these when you're in training, um, it can take you a long way. For example, um, there was a guy in my selection class who passed selection, got selected, and both his feet were broken at the end of selection. And unfortunately, 
took him too long to recover and they just dropped him from the course right after that. Pretty messed up, but that's what happens with injuries, guys, okay? Uh, let's get into number two, okay? And that is going to be ankle injuries, particularly at land navigation, okay? So, for those of you who haven't done land navigation with a 45 or 55 pound rucksack on your back in the woods at night, okay? You're going to step in potholes and trip on things ad nauseum. You are going to roll your ankles so many times that it will basically strip the, all the ligaments and cartilage out of your ankles, okay? The biggest thing is if you haven't sort of built flexibility into your ankles before you go out and do this and you have a really bad roll, it can actually tear ligaments and tendons and things like that and it can ruin um, your time at SFAS. However, after about the first time you really roll your ankles bad, you'll notice pretty much your ligaments and tendons kind of loose, loosen up in your ankles and then your ankles will just roll all the time, constantly, hundreds of times in land nav. Uh, but it won't cause damage and it'll be annoying, but it won't really even be that painful after a few seconds. So again, it's just one of those things I would highly suggest if you're gonna go to SFAS, you get out in the woods, in your boots, rucksack, get your ankles loosened up, stretched out, so that way it doesn't end your journey having injured them at um, SFAS, okay? I'm telling you guys, you will. Everybody who's been through SFAS or any Q course that's involved land nav is laughing right now because they know how miserable it is constantly rolling your ankles, especially at night, all right? So, um, yeah, we talked about uh, why they're dangerous, how to prevent them, recovery. Recovery is not too bad on these, okay? You can tape your feet up. Um, you know, if it's really bad, you can still kind of get through it. That's the good thing about these injuries. Is even if you roll it really bad, it's gonna be miserable for the rest of SFAS, but you could probably get through it because you can't really make these injuries worse, um, which is kind of the good thing about those, right? Unlike a broken bone, which you can make substantially worse. So, number three, okay? This one's the most dangerous one and it gets a ton of guys, okay? Uh, and that is going to be weather injuries, okay? Both hot and cold. So depending on the time you're going through, well, in, in the Special Forces Qualification course, it's so long, you're gonna go through training in both, okay? Um, but, Heat injuries are, are by far the most dangerous, okay? We've, I had um, students killed in the Q course while I was there, died from heat injuries, okay? It's, it's a serious thing, it's very dangerous. Um, and what causes it, okay? Well, the Q course is in Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and in the summer, it gets up to 90, 100 degrees, super humid, and you do extreme endurance events in that heat. It's absolutely brutal, okay? Um, so things like it becoming a heat casualty, which ultimately, if it's bad, bad enough, can give you rhabdo, okay? If you get to that point, you're pretty much hosed, okay? You're, you're gonna most likely get dropped from the course because it takes so long to recover from. And the other thing is, once you've had rhabdo, you become an extreme risk to having future heat casualty events, okay? So it's, it's a bit of a career ender. I do know some guys who have made it through afterwards, but for most guys, it's pretty much over, okay? So heat injuries, most dangerous. Next, cold weather injuries, okay? Um, these are a little bit harder because the cadre, usually if it's so cold outside, they'll uh, bring you in, but I know guys that have gotten frostbite um, in their fingers and things like that and been dropped from the course out at Squad Unit Tactics. I did it in January, which was the worst thing ever. Um, you know, you're out in a patrol base and it's 28 degrees and you're laying on the ground and there's no heat, like, it can happen, okay? So, how do we prevent these? The biggest thing is acclimation. You have to get acclimated to whatever weather you're about to go train in. So, if you live in Alaska and you, you know, it's never warm and then you go into the summer straight to SFAS in the Q course in Bragg, you show up and you're not acclimated, you are going to be at extreme risk. How to get acclimated? Well, for heat, things like doing sauna work. I would suggest you're in the sauna multiple times a week, pushing yourself to extreme uncomfort, not dangerous, um, in the sauna to try to work and acclimate to some of that heat. Okay, cold weather, same way, a little bit harder. You can do things like ice baths, stuff like that, try to get your body shocked and acclimated into it, okay? It's hard to get acclimated, but those are just some tips and tricks, because usually weather injuries are, are straight up career enders, which is why they're so dangerous, okay? Now, 
Uh, this is gonna be just kind of a number four caveat side one um, that I actually saw a lot of guys get dropped from, um, and that is going to be eye injuries when you're out in the woods, especially at land nav, okay? It's night, you can't see what's going on. I know a ton of guys that took sticks into the eye, okay? That is in, if you hear the saying, life, limb, or eyesight, eyesight's gonna get you dropped from from training kind of immediately. You take a stick all the way into your eyeball, they have to get you to the hospital because they don't want you to lose your vision, okay? Um, so, very, very dangerous and actually very, very common because, and I'm guilty of this, out at land nav at night, when it's, especially in the summertime, it's hot, you're sweating, your safety goggles are getting fogged up constantly, you can't see anything, it's just a lot easier, take them off, not wear them, okay? And then, boom, that's how guys take sticks in the eye, all right? So, keep your safety glasses on, all right? Everybody wants to take them off when it's a situation like that, but I would highly suggest you do it, because as soon as that stick goes into your eyeball, one, it's a nasty injury to get, and two, you're pretty much hosed, okay? So, um, yeah, that is, uh, that's gonna wrap it up, right? These, again, um, are the most common ones I saw, as in the biggest number of people get dropped for these injuries, okay? Stress fractures, number one, by far, um, and then things like um, ankle injuries, not so bad, but some guys, if it's bad enough, the weather injuries is also a big one, guys, and of course, um, fewer but eye injuries, too, so. I'd highly suggest if you are getting ready to go, you don't just focus on your fitness, but you also work on your acclimation, getting your bones acclimated, your ankles acclimated, weather acclimated, all those things. So, all right guys, hope you found that interesting and um, can get some value out of that. Have a good one.